Hi. In the last video, we looked at the intellectual levels and habits of Jehovah's Witnesses. And although higher professions are lower than average among Jehovah's Witnesses, things like doctors and professors, it is not a matter of raw intellect that causes anti-intellectualism among Jehovah's Witnesses. The factor is the propaganda of the Watchtower that leads in that direction. This is a point that's uh, made by Jacques Ellul in his book Propaganda, The Formation of Men's Attitudes, this book here, that David has done a, a review of. Uh, he makes the point that propaganda can only work with people who are literate. He says this, The vast majority of people, perhaps 90%, know how to read, but do not exercise their intelligence beyond this. At, they attribute authority and eminent value to the printed word, or conversely reject it altogether. As these people do not possess enough knowledge to reflect and discern, they believe or disbelieve in toto what they read. And as such people, moreover, will select the easiest and not the hardest reading matter. They are precisely on the level at which the printed word can seize and convince them without opposition. They are perfectly adapted to propaganda. He also uh, makes another point. Uh, so what I'm going to say is that the Watchtower propaganda is that they supply you with a reason for world conditions. So when you have a generalized, stereotyped answer that fits all the concerns of the world, a very black and white presentation, you don't have to think anymore. Everything's done. You have that in the back of your mind, and it's always the answer you bring forward. So this is just a, a couple of points that it are illustrated also in Jacques Ellul's uh, writings. He says this about propaganda. Propaganda must also furnish an explanation for all happenings, a key to understand the whys and the reasons for economic and political developments. News, lose, news, news loses its frightening character when it offers information for which the listener already has a ready explanation in his mind, or for which he can easily find one. The great force of propaganda lies in giving modern man all-embracing, simple explanations and massive doctrinal causes without which he could not live with the news. Man is doubly reassured by pr propaganda, first because it tells him the reasons behind the developments which unfold, and secondly, because it promises a solution for all the problems that arise, which would otherwise seem insoluble. Just as information is necessary for awareness, propaganda is necessary to prevent this awareness from being desperate. So people who are disillusioned with the world situation are going to be uh, prey to uh, the propaganda that the Watchtower offers. This is also Jacques Ellul's point. Uh, he says, Propaganda standardizes current ideas, hardens prevailing stereotypes, and furnishes thought patterns in all areas. This, is co this codifies, oh, thus it codifies social, political, and moral standards. He says, The stereotype which is stable helps man to avoid thinking to take a personal position or to form his own opinion. Everything's done for him. He just has to go back to the, the stereotype answers. Then on uh, towards the, the end of the book he says, man modified in this fashion demands simple solutions, catchwords, certainties, continuity, commitment, a clear and simple division of the world into good and evil, efficiency and unity of thought. 
He cannot bear ambiguity. He cannot bear that the opponent should in any way whatever represent what is right or good. So I think all of these points that Jacolo makes are in the Watchtower and in their, their propaganda. I'm going to share two, two case histories related to anti-intellectualism as a crisis in uh, the life of a Jehovah's Witness. The first one is, is about an elder who, who became a witness in later life, so he didn't grow up as a witness. The next one we'll do in the next video is a woman who grew up as a witness. So here is uh, what, Jacques, what um, Jerry Bergman writes about in connection with this elder. So just before he tells you a little bit about the, the elder, he talks about the elder arrangement. The result of the constant pressure to maintain a certain image is that each elder tends to feel that he is the only one with problems, doubts, frustrations, and hostilities towards other elders, the congregation, and the Watchtower Society, when in fact these feelings are actually quite common, but hidden. Because elders can rarely be fully honest, even with each other, the relationships among them tend to be artificial and somewhat strained. The ideal is constantly paraded in front of them, both by the society and by individual congregational members. This ideal, the elders believe, is the real state of affairs. They therefore outwardly conform according to their false picture of the congregation, other elders, the outside world, and sometimes even of themselves. Because each elder is continually trying to paint an ideal picture of himself, few elders are aware of the real behavior of either the other elders or the congregation in general. Many elders slowly become increasingly disillusioned. So we're going to talk in other videos about the lack of freedom to, to even express when you have problems or doubts or or uh, behavioral concerns about yourself. This is uh, now into the specific elder. He said, I walked out of the Kingdom Hall in December of 1984 after 14 years of association with Jehovah's Witnesses. During that time period, I had served in almost every capacity possible at the congregational level elder, ministerial servant, book study conductor, watchtower overseer, presiding overseer. I was a public speaker and gave lectures in nearly every congregation in southwestern Connecticut. I was happy at first having thought that I had found the true religion. But then some small doubts surfaced along, the, a gro along with a growing discomfort with the oppressive, dogmatic, dull, repetitive writing style of the Watchtower magazine. Though I did not know why, I was becoming increasingly suspicious of the phrase, God's organization. I found myself downright critical of modern-day fulfillment. Each meeting became harder and harder to go to. The final straw came when I attended the School for Elders in 1984. We spent nearly an entire day discussing the organization's meaning of the term approved associate. For two days we met and learned absolutely nothing of any real value. This was followed almost immediately by a visit from the circuit overseer. He was a hard-line organization man. There was no pretense of love from him. Simply make sure everybody was following organizational policy. I had enough. I walked out and left a letter asking them not to call me. And then he concludes with these comments about elders. When elders are able to break through this barrier and discuss some of their doubts about the Watchtower Society, 
a tendency exists to assume that their loyalty to the society is wavering, which often, at first, is not true. The other elder's response, though, often causes them to question more. If they, this concern is perceived by the other elders as serious, the doubters are either removed or made to feel guilty and pressured to bridle their individual thinking. This social pressure commonly only forces them to clandestinely carry out Bible research or read on religious topics and not reveal their findings to the other elders. I think this kind of reminds me of David's situation where he had questions, concerns, but he was fearful to tell the elders. He knew what might happen if he told them about his concerns. So I recall uh, as a witness being frequently told how well fed we were, you know, how much spiritual food we had. But for those that are intellectually curious, and I, I wouldn't say that I was a, an intellectually curious witness, for those that are intellectually curious and hungry, the sameness of style and content in the Watchtower materials belies that statement, that repeated statement that we are so well fed. I'm going to link to David's video on the Jacques Allo book, Propaganda. Uh, he recommends it as just basic reading for everyone. And then uh, I will link to the playlist on cults and propaganda. We have uh, 116 videos in that uh, playlist.